Hello! Another review today, this time something from my old friend at AKK Tech. And I have to say, when I first saw it, I just thought, oh, they've sent me another one of these to put on a, a plane or something. Because I saw this and it said X2 on it, and I thought, looks the same as the X1. But it doesn't! Crucially, it's got this extra little pin that says S Audio on it, which uh, in real terms means Smart Audio. What is Smart Audio? Well, most of you probably know. Developed by Team Black Sheep, um, it allows you to basically control your VTX from the OSD on your flight controller. So you plumb it into one of the UARTs and you should be able to change channel. So I've got a particularly useful quad for this one. This is one of my favorite quads um, and one I've had for a while. I got it to review for a magazine. So this was from Lift RC and something was called something like the Matty Stunts 5 inch racing frame. What I loved about it is it was such a low profile, just 20 mil between the plates there. Unfortunately, this meant, although the um, VTX has a push button to change channel, it's almost impossible to get in there. So I thought this would pop in there really well and I'll be able to change my channels uh, using my remote. Just a, a few secs as well to, uh, to thank somebody. This isn't quite the original one. Despite these uh, being 4 mil pretty nice carbon fibre, I managed to smash two of these legs up. Um, and Lift RC seems to have, I don't know if it's gone out of business or something, but their website's dead. So big thanks to Stephen Bishop at Tech Imports who supplied me with a replacement frame which was really nice of him. Um, so I've got my legs back on I'll, I'll put some links for his website down there. But let's crack on, get this in and see how it works. Okay, here's the uh, quad with the top stripped off. Now it's got an Omnibus F4 on at the moment and the only problem I have with these is the pins are really weird. So I use S-Bus here which is actually UART1, which means it's, that's UART1 there. It's also got UARTs, I think, UARTs 3 and 6 in here. But I don't know if one of them is off the limits because I had to reassign one of the pins here. It's all a bit weird. Anyway, I'm going to... This is my current VTX. You can see there's, there's the push button there. And it would be really easy to see because it's got these lights, but of course I can't see in there. I'm just going to chop this off rather than desolder it. So I can just then join some wires here and then find the right connector to there so I can solder in just the TX which is just about fit. Let's get on with that. We've simply joined the voltage, ground, video and video ground to the existing wires with this lovely lilac heat shrink. We've then just capped off, this is a 5 volt out to the camera which we didn't need and this green wire here is the smart audio which plugs into this little connector I found. There's actually six pins here. This is a five pin one, but it shoves in there. Um, so I just thought I'd show what we got here just before I tidy this up and put the top back on, see what happens. And um, there's actually RPSMA as opposed to my old one here, which is uh, SMA. So I've changed over to um, this AKK RPSMA SKU that I had as well. So that should uh, all go together okay. So I'm just gonna, now power this up and make sure I get something and then I think I've got some changes to doing beta flight and stuff. Here we are in beta flight just showing the changes here and it's pretty much nothing to it. All we have to do is go to the UART you've used, now I've used UART 3 and just set the peripheral to TBS Smart Audio and uh, you can leave the other thing as auto which is the board rate and that is actually it. Now I say that was it, there's one thing I thought I could do but it turns out I can't seem to do it and I thought I could go into the OSD section and show the actual VTX channel on the screen. So I actually activated it here and I noticed nothing showed up. Now I don't know if this is because in order to use this you have to have the VTX actually on the flight control itself and I notice in the configuration tab there's a place where you can select VTX. Now this doesn't work for this. Uh, so maybe I, I've, I've misinterpreted that and that's literally just a VTX on the board itself. But anyway, really nothing to it and uh, let's go and see it in action now. So having wired this up, I thought I'd just show you how it actually works on the bench. So I'm going to power this one up. Now you will see, and I'm going to zoom in, that right now it's saying F. One, one, which means it's on fat shot one and one being 25 milliwatts. 
So this is a sort of normal thing and you can press the button and you can change channels and bands and um, power just like normal. But what I'm going to do is go through the uh, OSD menu, show you what happens. If we go into the OSD menu now, we go to features, VTX SA meaning smart audio, it shows you there it's on F1 uh, 5740-25mW and some things happen straight away. So if I say let's change the power to 200mW, you see there that it now says F1 2 and if I change it again, F1 3, and I can go all the way up to 800 milliwatts, which is quite frightening for this. So let's chuck it back down to 25. Now, um, bands and channels work a bit differently. So if I say I want to do, for example, race band one, or let's just be easy. Let's just say I want to change to channel four. It obviously doesn't do that straight away, else I'd lose it. So you have to go to set and then say yes. And then I have to get my channel back. There it is. Change that back again. So back to channel one. Because it looks quickly again. And there we are. Pretty cool, I think. Now so here we are in the field. And if you'll notice, the amount of lines I've got and noise is quite horrible. And uh, this is down to a bit of a dodgy F4 omnibus board I had. It did it on the last VTX and it's I think the sort of dirty power the omnibus seems to be giving to the VTX is just causing this interference noise. So please ignore that and it's nowhere near as bad in the actual goggles. Very weird thing. I'll, I'll have to sort that out though. So what I'm doing here because you know it works fine but a lot of people ask me about exactly what uh, what sort of power I'm flying at when I can get to the end of the field and I'm just showing that depending on your environment you really don't need much so this is on 25 milliwatts and I've just gone to the end of the field and I'll, I'll pop up uh, an exact figure saying how far that is I think it's about 250 300 meters and you'll see that it's absolutely fine when you've got a big open field you've got no real bits of interference and even you know fly reasonably low to the ground you've got no problem getting easily that sort of range your only enemy really is you know things in your way so going around that tree we got a little bit of interference um, it's no big deal but um, what I normally fly on is 200 so let's change that to 200 milliwatts and we'll do the same flight again see if there's much difference I have to say, generally speaking, in terms of micro quads, I don't fly them to the end of the field because, well, there's not much point really, and um, it's always a longer walk to go and get them. But anyway, this goes up to the crazy heights of 800 milliwatts, which is just more than I can ever expect to use on a mini quad. Now, it might be more useful in a plane, but don't forget that you don't just double the range by doubling the power. It's more the fact that you have to sort of times the power by four every time you double the range. So so you really end up running out of uh, power eventually just to get more distance. But, you know, this is um, it's a powerful thing. It will get you a long way. So I, I passed by 500 milliwatts and went straight to 800 milliwatts just to fly this last one. I was going to fly 500 as well, but I didn't think the battery was quite going to last that long after taking a a few hits down back. should explain as well, I got a CMOS camera on this quad. Mostly because um, it was so small that was the only thing that would fit. Probably now I could get a, a Runcam MicroSwift in there which I might change over for. Do that at the same time I clear up this picture because it's starting to annoy me on the DVR playback now. So yeah, 800 milliwatts equals less uh, static when going around that tree. So it might be best in the environment where you're going to get a lot of obstacles and things but it's not a magic bullet if you've got a complete block there then 800 milliwatts is the same as anything it's going to block but there you go the VTX works brilliantly I absolutely love the smart audio thing I don't really know how I'm going to cope not having that normally now I mean what sort of sucker actually goes and uses dip switches or presses buttons now 
Uh, and the price of this thing is crazy cheap as well. So uh, check it out on the AKK website. I'll link below. Uh, but yeah, that's my video for now. I, I like it. Easy to install and it's absolutely uh, practically effortless to get it running right. Catch you next time. Bye for now.